Oh, hello there do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics here at electrical-online.com and of course right here on YouTube. So what am I doing under the hood of a truck, you ask? Well, I work on vehicle electrical systems too. In fact, uh, my dad taught me a lot of stuff about vehicles. Right from a young age, taught me how to check tire pressures, how to check fluid levels, and even brake jobs, right down to changing oil on vehicles. In fact, everything short of probably rebuilding an engine we would do in our, in our backyard garage. So I appreciate that because it taught me how to, a little bit about mechanics as well. So it's good to have a, a wide range of knowledge. Now, while I was here, I was away for a couple months and, and when I come back to, came back, the truck battery was dead in a doornail. So I finally got it going again, boosted and uh, recharged. So that's working. But as I was under the hood here, I noticed that my under hood convenience light wasn't working. So I thought I'd check it out and see why and maybe we'll take that apart and find out why it's not working. So before we get started with this, let's talk a little bit about safety. Now all my videos I always emphasize shutting off the power and that's a little, little less convenient to do that when working on a vehicle without disconnecting the battery cables. But 12 volt DC has much less power as far as a potential difference than does your household current of 120 volt at 12 volts you're looking at 10 times less the potential for forcing current through objects however there can be hazards with it as well so first things first we're going to take off the jewelry because uh, i'm going to explain further how hazardous 12 volts can be in the right situation but just for any reason electrically and mechanically rings can get caught watches can be hazardous so i am going to take these off in fact i get caught a few times on my videos for working on electrical and I've still got my rings on I've forgotten to take them off so let's get those off I'm going to take off my nice ring that uh, was inherited through two generations down to me and then of course my my wedding band and I'm going to take off this watch so first things first when troubleshooting that light under the hood it's kind of a proximity switch so when the hood comes up it's supposed to turn on and when you drop the hood back down it's off so We'll take that apart and, and see what makes it tick. But first, the simple fix sometimes is just to give the light a slap and see if that wakes it back up. So we'll try that. Nothing. So let's take it off of there. We can unclip it from the hood and we'll shake it around a little bit, see if we can free up that sticky switch or see if the contacts are bad. So let's try that before we go further into the troubleshooting. So the light just clips in under the hood here, so I'm going to pull that down, shake it around a little bit. You can hear that motion switch, proximity switch going back and forth, but still not working. So we got to go a little further. Let's uh, take this right off. We're going to unplug it, take it over to my workbench and uh, see what we can find. You see it just unplugs here, so what we're going to do first is test that to make sure we got 12 volts here. So as I mentioned, after beating on it, if that doesn't work, then you want to make sure you got power here, because without power here, of course, that would explain why the light doesn't work. So vehicles are a 12 volt negative ground system. So you should be able to put your negative lead on the vehicle frame anywhere that's not painted or corroded and stick your positive probe in the red wire on this connector. However, you want to make sure that you've got both a ground, a good solid ground and a positive here at this connector so we're going to go right to the plug itself and we're going to check it so i've got my black wire on this side so i'll put my black cable in there and my red cable my red test lead on the positive side and as you can see there on the meter i do have 12.69 volts so i've got the probes right into the connector so there's no reason that that light shouldn't work if there isn't something wrong inside of the light unit itself because we've got the full voltage here. Let's take that apart and see what we can find. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is check that lamp, make sure it's not burned out. So we'll pry off the lens and we're going to check across. You can see there's the lamp right inside there check resistance across it. So basically we set our meter to ohms 
And then we want to check to make sure our meter is good so you, and your test leads are good. So you touch them together and you make sure that you've got a very, very low resistance, which we do, 0 0.0 or 0 0.1 ohms. So that basically says you've got a, a connection, an electrical connection here between these two leads in the meter. So now you want to do the same across that lamp. So you want to check both ends of the lamp. And we have 1.1 ohms. So that's reading the cold resistance across the filament in that lamp. Keep in mind this is an older vehicle too, so it doesn't have LED lights. This is a 2001 GMC Sierra. So we, we've got incandescent light bulbs in it. So low, low resistance across that filament. But 1.1 ohms is what it's reading cold which means the filament is good. If you had zero, just like having our leads apart here, if you had an open line reading, basically nothing then, air, that means that the filament is burned out. But nope, that tells me that this lamp is good. Let's tear it apart further and see what could be wrong with the proximity switch. Okay, on this particular switch, there's one, two, three, four, five, six little latches that you gotta release to pull it apart. Now the cover comes off and we can see what makes it tick inside there. So looks like this switch just kind of flops back and forth with gravity. And there's a weight in here. So let's take it apart. Here's the weight that pivots and flops back and forth as the hood goes up and down. And inside here, I can see we've got some corrosion on these contact points. So I'm going to clean those all up with contact cleaner and a pencil eraser. That works really well to do that. So basically, that's the switch right there. You've got copper on this side and copper on this side. And when this assembly rocks back and forth with the weight of that, that uh, balance weight in there, then it uh, rolls back and forth and makes contact between these two points or not. So we're going to clean this all up, use some contact cleaner, like I said, a pencil eraser to clean up these contact points and we'll put it all back together and try it. Okay, so looking at, the, you can see this has got a little bit hot here. That's kind of a halogen 12 volt lamp, so it gets extremely warm. But now you can see there's that strip of copper in there or brass that uh, makes the contact between here. These are the two points that need to connect together to make the lamp go on. And so you see I've cleaned it up. Let's get a good angle on that. There's the other strip in there. Get the light right, right in here. So I've cleaned those up nice, shiny. And here is the assembly that connects those two sides together. So you can see I've cleaned those contact points all up nice. Let's see if it's going to work. Putting it all back together now. You can see in here, there's a little well in there for the pointy part of this weight. Pointy part of this weight fits into here. And that makes it rock back and forth with gravity. So we'll get that in there. I'll make sure it moves back and forth properly and smoothly like it should. And then we'll put in our switch contacts that are operated by that weight. Put them in there, or the contact in there. So that slides it back and forth, making yes or no on the contact to turn it on and off. And now we'll put the cap back on. I could check now to make with my ohm meter to make sure that I'm getting contact across here. But without the cap on, there's little bumps, little ridges in here inside of this the cover that actually pushes the spring tension down on those contacts. So without that cover on, I really can't check it. So let's put it back together. I'm almost certain I've got the problem fixed because I cleaned up those and they were gummy and dirty. So snap that back together. And 
Let's make sure it, you can hear it clicking back and forth as I rock it. So I'm confident we've got it. Let's put it back together, put the lens cover on, and we'll go reinstall it in the truck. So let me just tell you a little story about somebody with a watch strap such as this on this beautiful watch from Filippo Loretti. It's a metal strap. And so you saw me take off the rings and the watch while working on the vehicle. And yes, 12 volts is a very low voltage. So it does not have enough potential to push, push current through your body to give you a good shock or anything like that. However, Here's where the problem lies. Now I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine. He was working on his truck. He was underneath it. Kevin, you know who you are. And he reached up and got his wrist watch, the strap. He touched the positive post of the starter and the other side of the watch strap hit the frame of the truck because it was a tight spot. Well now, You've got a super low resistance here through a metal watch strap and you've got only 12 volts but no resistance to current flow so many amps can flow like a battery can produce 600 to 1000 amps of cold cranking amps so that's a lot of current flowing through that little metal strap which made it red hot instantly and you can actually weld with 12 volts with low enough resistance so basically that watch strap just got red hot instantly third degree burns all around his wrist so not a good scene it took him forever it was a horrible horrible injury that he had there it took a long time for that to heal up so there's how 12 volts can get you into trouble with a lot of a low resistance to current flow a lot of current can flow at one time so there's where you can run into a problem with 12 volts make sure you take all that jewelry off when you're working on your vehicle Okay, so now that we've checked the lamp, it's okay. We've taken it apart and cleaned up that proximity switch and it seems to be working and conducting now. Let's plug it in and make sure that it works. So plug it back into the unit here. To it. The connector has a little locking mechanism that clips into place and we'll test it before we mount it on the hood to make sure it's working. So the hood comes up and the light comes on and the hood goes down the light goes off. Perfect. So we'll mount it back in place and we'll call it a wrap on this one. So thanks again for watching. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so that way you'll know when I release a new video but those likes and subscribes really help us with the YouTube algorithm. So please do that for me. Thanks again for watching. Until next time. So let me tell you about this watch. It's made by Filippo Loretti and to quote from their website, Filippo Loretti was founded with a rebellious spirit and an ambitious goal to offer designer accessories at a revolutionary price. So in a nutshell, they set out to make luxury accessible and part of your daily life. And they do that by bypassing traditional channels, building direct relationships with the best manufacturers and designing their products in house. This enables them to provide high quality, beautiful luxury goods at down to earth prices. Their vision started in November of 2015 with a successful crowdfunding campaign and it grew from there to where they are today. Every piece in the Filippo Loretti collection draws inspiration from many icons of Roman Empire and pays homage to the art, history and culture of Italy. Every watch is crafted by hand and is strictly a limited edition. You will be sure to own a watch that is rare and unique and something that you can truly own with pride. This particular model is the Okanos Blue Steel Link. So I'd like to thank the people at Filippo Loretti for providing me this beautiful watch to showcase to my subscriber base. And I'll provide a link to their website where you can shop for your own perfect timepiece.